The 10 Most Famous Parables in the Bible Welcome to our exciting journey through biblical history, where we will explore the 10 most famous parables that have captivated believers and non-believers for centuries. The Bible, as one of the most influential literary works of all time, contains a wide variety of teachings and narratives that convey wisdom and spiritual truth in the form of parables. These short and powerful stories invite us to reflect on life, faith, and the deeper meaning of our actions. With that said, let's start with the parables. Number 10. The Parable of the Workers in the Vineyard. Gospel of Matthew, Chapter 20, Verses from 1 to 16. The Parable of the Laborers in the Vineyard is a teaching found in the New Testament of the Bible. In this parable, Jesus tells a story to convey a spiritual and moral message to his followers. The parable tells how a vineyard owner goes out early in the morning to hire workers to work in his field. He makes an agreement with them to pay them a denarius, which was the common currency of payment at the time, for their work on the day. After hiring the first workers, the owner returns to the plaza several times throughout the day and continues to hire more workers, promising them fair compensation for his efforts. At the end of the day, when the time comes to pay the workers, the owner begins by giving a denarius to those who were hired last, those who only worked one hour. This causes surprise and annoyance among the first workers, who expect to receive more money due to their longer work time. However, the owner explains to them that the established agreement has been fulfilled and that he has the right to do what he wants with his money. He reminds them that they have not been unfairly treated, as they received what was initially agreed upon. The main message of this parable is the teaching about God's grace and his justice. Jesus uses the figure of the owner of the vineyard to represent God, who shows his generosity and unconditional love by rewarding all workers regardless of how hard they have worked. The parable challenges the human mindset of seeking rewards based on merit and emphasizes equality in the kingdom of God. This story invites you to reflect on the importance of not comparing yourself with others and not looking for earthly rewards, but trusting in the grace of God. Furthermore, it reminds us that God's love and generosity are undeserved and that we cannot earn salvation by our own works but rather it is a freely given gift. Number 9. The Parable of the Rich Fool. Gospel of Luke, Chapter 12, Verses from 16 to 21. The Parable of the Rich Fool is found in the Gospel of Luke in the Bible. Jesus tells it as a lesson to warn against covetousness and a lack of spiritual perspective. The story narrates the experience of a rich man whose fields produce a great harvest. With so much grain stored, he is faced with the question of where to store it all. He decides to tear down his existing barns and build larger ones to store his bountiful crops, so that he can enjoy a life of comfort and security for many years to come. However, instead of showing gratitude and generosity towards others, the man only thinks of himself and his material well-being. He congratulates himself saying, you have many riches stored for many years. He rests, eats, drinks and enjoys life. At that moment, God speaks to him and says, fool. This very night they will claim your life. And what will happen to what you have accumulated? The parable concludes with Jesus teaching that those who accumulate wealth for themselves but are not rich toward God are considered foolish. The parable of the rich fool teaches us several important lessons. First of all, it shows us the transience of life and the uncertainty of our time on earth. None of us knows when our end will come, so focusing our lives exclusively on accumulating material wealth is a limited and selfish perspective. Second, the parable calls us to reflect on our priorities and how we use our resources. It is not wrong to have possessions or enjoy the benefits of our work, but we must remember that our blessings must be shared with others and used to help those who need it. Finally, 
The parable urges us to be rich toward God. This means that we must seek a meaningful and spiritual relationship with God, cultivate virtues such as kindness, generosity, and compassion, and live our lives with a purpose beyond the accumulation of earthly wealth. Number 8. The Parable of the Leaven. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 33. The parable of the leaven is a teaching that Jesus shared with his followers during his ministry on earth. This parable is found in the Gospel of Matthew, and it presents a powerful spiritual lesson through a simple metaphor. In the parable, Jesus compares the kingdom of heaven to a small amount of yeast that a woman mixes with a large amount of flour. Yeast is an agent used to make bread dough rise. Jesus claims that although the leaven is small compared to the amount of flour, it will eventually affect the entire lump. Leaven, in this context, represents the gospel message and the transforming power of the kingdom of God. Jesus wants to convey to his followers that the impact of the gospel is not limited to a few people, but has the potential to spread and transform the entire world. This parable teaches us that the kingdom of God will gradually grow and expand, influencing people and transforming society. Although the gospel message may start small, its power to change is significant and can have a lasting impact on people's lives. Furthermore, the parable of the leaven can also be interpreted as a call for believers to be agents of change in the world. Just as yeast mixes with flour and transforms the whole dough, followers of Jesus must spread the message of love, compassion and justice in all areas of society, hoping to make a positive difference in the world. Number 7. The Parable of the Pharisee and the Publican. Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses from 9 to 14. The parable of the Pharisee and the publican is a story told by Jesus in the Gospel of Luke. In this parable, Jesus uses two characters to teach a lesson about the right attitude before God. The Pharisee was a religious leader and the publican was a tax collector, considered a sinner and despised by society at that time. Both characters go to the temple to pray, but they have very different attitudes and approaches. The Pharisee stands in a prominent place and begins to pray, but instead of humbly addressing God, he takes pride in his good works and boasts of his righteousness. He says, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, swindlers, unjust, adulterers, not even like this publican. I fast twice a week, and I give tithes of everything I earn. On the other hand, the publican stays in a secluded corner, beating his chest in repentance and saying, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. At the end of the parable, Jesus reveals the lesson he wants to teach. He asserts that the publican, despite his sinful reputation, was justified before God because he showed humility and recognition of his need for forgiveness. Meanwhile, the Pharisee, despite his apparent righteousness, was not justified because his attitude was proud and he despised others. The parable of the Pharisee and the publican teaches us the importance of humility and sincerity in our relationship with God. We cannot rely on our good works or our own righteousness to earn God's favor. Instead, we must acknowledge our faults and sins and trust in God's mercy and forgiveness. Number 6. The Parable of the Talents. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses from 14 to 30. The Parable of the Talents is a teaching found in the New Testament of the Bible. Jesus told this parable to his disciples to convey an important lesson about the proper use of the gifts and abilities God has given us. The story relates how a rich man, before going on a trip, gives different amounts of money to three of his servants, according to his ability. To one he gives five talents, to another two, and to another one. The talent was a measure of weight and currency in ancient Palestine, but in this parable it is used as a metaphor to represent the resources and abilities entrusted to us by God. 
The first two servants immediately went to work and used the talents they had been given to make a profit. The servant who received five talents doubled his investment, and the one who received two talents also received an equal benefit. However, the third servant, out of fear and lack of trust, decided to bury his talent in the ground and do nothing with it. After a while, the master returned and called his servants to account. The first two introduced themselves and showed how they had duplicated the talents entrusted to them. The master praised them and gave them greater responsibility and joy. But the servant who had buried his talent was rebuked for his laziness and inaction. The master took the talent from him and gave it to the servant who had ten talents. The parable concludes with the teaching that those who use well the gifts and abilities they have been given will be given even more, while those who do not use them will lose even the little they have. The story highlights the importance of being diligent and responsible with what we have been entrusted with, whether in terms of natural talents, financial resources, or opportunities to serve God and others. Number 5. The Parable of the Lost Sheep. Gospel of Luke, Chapter 15, Verses from 3 to 7. The parable of the lost sheep is a story told by Jesus in the Bible to convey a lesson about God's love and compassion towards those who have strayed from him. In this parable, Jesus describes a shepherd who has a hundred sheep, but one of them is lost. The shepherd leaves the ninety-nine sheep in the flock and goes in search of the lost sheep. He searches tirelessly until he finally finds her. Then, with great joy, he loads the sheep on his shoulders and returns home. Upon arrival, the shepherd calls his friends and neighbors to celebrate because he has found his lost sheep. The parable of the lost sheep has a deep meaning. Jesus wanted to convey that God cares for each person individually, even when they drift away or get lost. God is willing to go in search of those who have strayed from him, with love and mercy. The parable shows the importance of every life and how God rejoices when someone repents and turns to him. This parable also teaches the importance of compassion and actively seeking out those who need help. Jesus compares his own mission on earth to that of the shepherd searching for the lost sheep. He came to seek and save those who had strayed from God. Number 4. The Parable of the Good Shepherd. Gospel of John, Chapter 10, Verses from 1 to 18. The Parable of the Good Shepherd is a well-known teaching found in the Gospel of John, within the New Testament of the Bible. In this parable, Jesus uses the figure of a shepherd to convey a profound message about his relationship with his followers and his role as spiritual leader. In the parable, Jesus compares himself to a good shepherd who takes care of his flock of sheep. He says that the good shepherd knows each one of his sheep and they know him. The shepherd calls his sheep by his name and they follow him because they recognize his voice and trust him. The good shepherd shows unconditional care and love for his sheep. He protects them from dangers, guides them to green pastures, and provides them with everything they need. He is even willing to sacrifice his life for them if necessary. On the other hand, the thief or the hireling who is not the true shepherd, does not have the same commitment and love for the sheep, so they do not care about their well-being and abandon them when faced with any difficulty. In this parable, Jesus teaches us that he is the good shepherd and we are his sheep. He knows each of us by name and cares for us with love and compassion. He guides us in our lives, he provides us with what is necessary and protects us from spiritual dangers. He also shows us his willingness to lay down his life for us, as he did at his crucifixion, to save us from sin and restore our relationship with God. The parable of the Good Shepherd invites us to trust Jesus as our guide and protector. He encourages us to follow his voice and to maintain an intimate relationship with him. Furthermore, he challenges us to recognize and turn away from deceptive voices that may try to lead us astray from the path of truth and abundant life that Jesus offers.
Number 3. The Parable of the Sower. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses from 1 to 23. The parable of the sower is one of the best known and most significant parables in the Bible. It is found in the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus told it to a large crowd that had gathered to hear his teaching. The parable tells the story of a sower who went out to sow his seeds. As he tossed the seeds, they fell on different types of ground. Some fell by the road, where the birds ate them. Others fell on stony ground where there was not much soil, and although they germinated quickly, they withered due to lack of roots. Others fell among thorns, which grew and choked the plants. And finally, some fell on good ground, where they produced a bountiful harvest. Jesus explained the meaning of this parable to his disciples. The seeds represent the word of God, that is, the message of the gospel. The sower represents Jesus or anyone who preaches the word of God. The different types of terrain symbolize the different receivers of the word. The seeds that fell along the road represent those who hear the message, but do not understand it and the devil comes and takes the word from his heart. Seeds on rocky ground are those who receive the word with joy at first, but do not have deep roots, so they abandon the faith when they face difficulties or persecution. The seeds among thorns represent those who are choked by the worries of life and riches, which prevents the word from bearing fruit in them. And the seeds in good soil are those who hear the word, understand it and apply it in their lives, producing an abundant harvest. The main teaching of this parable is that the way we receive and respond to God's word has an impact on our spiritual life. In order for the word to bear fruit in us, we must be receptive, understand it and live it in our daily lives, avoiding distractions and obstacles that can impede its growth. Number 2. The Parable of the Good Samaritan. Gospel of Luke, Chapter 10, Verses from 25 to 37. The Parable of the Good Samaritan is a story told by Jesus in the Gospel of Luke in the Bible. In this parable, Jesus answers a question from an expert in the law who asks him how to obtain eternal life. Jesus tells him that he must love God with all his heart and love his neighbor as himself. To illustrate his response, Jesus tells the story of a man who was robbed by robbers while traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. The robbers took off his clothes, beat him, and left him half dead by the side of the road. Both a priest and a Levite passed by on the same path, but when they saw the wounded man, they ignored him and continued on their way. However, a Samaritan, despite being considered an enemy and an outcast by the Jews, approached the wounded man and felt compassion for him. The Samaritan dressed his wounds, picked him up, and took him to an inn, where he cared for him overnight. The next day, The Samaritan paid the innkeeper to continue caring for the man, promising to cover any additional costs when he returned. Jesus concludes the parable by asking the expert in the law which of the three was the neighbor of the wounded man. The expert answers, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus tells him to go and do the same. The parable of the Good Samaritan teaches important lessons about compassion, love of neighbor, and the importance of helping those in need, regardless of their ethnic or religious background. Jesus stressed that it is not enough to know the law, but it is essential to put it into practice through love and compassion towards others. Number 1. The Parable of the Prodigal Son. Gospel of Luke, Chapter 15 verses from 11 to 32. The parable of the prodigal son is one of the best known and most significant stories found in the Bible, specifically in the Gospel of Luke. This parable is told by Jesus and aims to convey a powerful teaching on love, forgiveness and reconciliation. The story narrates the life of a father who had two children. The youngest son, full of yearning for freedom and desire to live his life his way, asks his father for his share of his inheritance and goes away from home. 
In this new place, the youngest son lives a riotous life, squandering his money on parties and pleasures. However, when a great famine strikes and the son runs out of resources, he is forced to work in the fields, feeding pigs, which was considered unclean according to Jewish traditions. At that point in his life, the younger son realizes his mistake and decides to return to his father, confessing his sin and asking to be treated as one of his servants, since he considers that he does not deserve to be called son. As the youngest son approaches his home, his father sees him in the distance and runs towards him. Filled with love and compassion, the father embraces his prodigal son and orders his servants to prepare a grand celebration for his return. Despite the objections of the eldest son, who feels unfairly treated, the father says it is cause for joy and celebration that his lost son has come home. The parable of the prodigal son represents God's unconditional love and his willingness to forgive those who sincerely repent. It highlights that no matter how far we have strayed from God or how many mistakes we have made, there is always the opportunity to return to him and be welcomed with love and mercy. In addition, this parable also invites reflection on forgiveness and compassion among human beings. It teaches us not to judge others and to be willing to forgive and accept those who have made mistakes, giving them a second chance.